Very good morning, it's Penny Well, the Black Pen. So Musi Maimani wrote a tweet that said, well, that was basically discussing how it's atrocious that we have a 30% pass rate in South Africa. So if you're in high school, you only need 30% to be able to pass and move to another grade or to get your matric results as a pass and you're ready for the real world. I want to first start off by giving Musi Maimani kudos. You know, he's been very vocal about the quality of our education system, the people that run our education system and how incompetent they are. With regard to this matter in particular, I made a video yesterday. I uploaded it on my TikTok, my Instagram and my Facebook page, all of them being Penuel the Black Pen. And I was explaining why I don't quite agree with Musi Maimani with moving the pass mark from 30% to 50% because he feels that would be better for this country. A lot of people understood what I was saying and I was very happy. And a lot of people didn't. And I think, or I believe I'm making this video in particular to try and very slowly and gently explain further what I meant in that video. I believe our education system is very bad. And mind you, our education system is not much different from the rest of the world. People speak about China, people speak about Singapore, People speak about Europe and about America, South Korea as well, Finland being probably the best in the world. And normally they rate maths and science and some type of literacy. The reality is if you look at CAPS in this country, and obviously we have the IEP system as well, the content of it is not much different. So in China, in Singapore, in Finland, in South Korea, they are studying maths, they are studying science, they are studying biology, all the things that you're studying. There might be some tweaks here and there in terms of some of the content. The difference, and I've said this before in the past, the difference between some of these schools and us is that they introduce certain topics earlier than us, number one. And number two, they invest a lot of time in getting their children competent. You see it with private schools in South Africa. You see it with some of the top public schools in South Africa. And you see it with children who are home educated. Where a child from a general government school probably does 30 minutes of maths in a day, a child from a top country, a top school, or that's home educated, maybe does two and a half hours of maths per day. So that's four times more maths, four times more science. You look at the Indian and the Chinese children in South Africa, they do extra classes. They have tutors, they do Pythagoras, they do study and master, they do physicam, etc. So doing this thing over and over and being introduced to certain subjects earlier obviously makes you look smarter. But the content is largely the same. In these other countries, they're not teaching children how to run businesses. They're not teaching children how to build manufacturing plants. They're not teaching children how to fix their family issues, how to bring world peace, etc. They are teaching generally the same stuff. The content for me across the world and in South Africa is rubbish. What do I mean? I mean education at its fundamental level is meant to equip you with the tools to solve your problems. Education, schooling, is meant to equip you with the tools to solve your problems. If the tool is such that get matric, get a degree or diploma, go get a job, and the job will pay you money, and the money will help you solve your problems, so be it. But by and large in this country, our economy is not doing well. We have graduates, 40% of our graduates don't have jobs. A lot of our matriculants don't have jobs, are sitting at home. Our youth has over a 70% uh, unemployment rate. People that are not working. These are people that spent 12 years in school. These are people that spent 17 years in school. Which tells me that they were not equipped with the tools to be able to solve their problems. And one of the tools for problem solving is money. Of course, getting a job, starting a business. Some of the tools you need to solve your problems is how can you go home and make sure that your mom and dad get together and are getting along? How do you ensure that if you have an absent father, he comes back into the home and he helps raise you? How do you ensure that you and your siblings get along better? How do you make sure that in your community there isn't poverty? There aren't people that are hungry. You might think, oh, if people are hungry, let's get money. No, it might actually be that at school they teach you guys, if there are hungry people in your community, go and find seeds in this place or seedlings. Go and take those seeds and seedlings and go and plant them in your community so that you guys have vegetables, and you have fruit trees so that you can eat. Go and get eggs and breed chickens so that you guys have eggs and you have chicken meat. 
Those are solutions. And our schooling system, not just in South Africa, but around the world, is built for a capitalist agenda from the Industrial Revolution saying, let us put these children in this system that turns them into robots, robots that can work well for big corporations. It is not institutions that are saying, Penel, what are your problems at home? Oh, my dad is absent. My mom hits me too much. I'm always fighting with my brother. There are potholes in our street. We don't have sufficient trees. We live in a shack. Okay, we've written down all your problems. And now we're going to look at the solutions. Some of them have to do with getting money. Some of them have to do with practical skills. If you live in a shack, let's teach you how to build a basic house. If you guys are hungry, let's teach you how to grow your own food. If there are potholes in your street, let us teach you how to close those potholes with clay, with cement, with some other stone or other rocks so that the streets are good. Let us teach you how to communicate with your parents, with your mom. Teach your mom how to discipline you outside of hitting you. Try and find your father. Explain to him why it is best for him to come back into the family, etc., etc. Our schools are not equipping us with that. So with that in mind, moving a pass mark from 30% to 50% is not going to change people's lives that much. 30% to 50%, that 20% difference is not going to solve those problems. Because like I said, there are kids that get matric with 50%, 60%. Some of those kids get exemption and get into university. Some of them get into um, technicons, what are called in, um, universities of technology in South Africa. They get their degrees and their diplomas, but they're sitting at home. They don't know how to start a basic business. They don't know how to market their skills online. They don't know where to go to and try and extract value. They don't know how to grow their own food. They're not considering becoming Uber drivers. They're not making online videos like Penuel the Black Pen on YouTube so that they can make money. They are sitting at home waiting for a job. So for me, moving the pass mark won't change much. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is if you look at a 30% child and a 50% child in the real world today, what is the difference? What is the difference between a child that got 30% for maths and 50% for maths? Yes, the 50% for maths got a higher mark. But in the real world, does that really, really make that a better person? It's almost like saying the child that came first in a race is much better than the child who came third in a race at a school race. And I'm asking the child that came first and the child that came third. The child that came third was there by five split seconds. What is the real difference when they're being chased by a dog? Not too much in my opinion. So I don't think the fixation on 50% does much. And fundamentally, I don't think it's going to push a lot of kids to want to strive to get 50%. That's the second thing I want to say. The third thing I want to say is this. Uh, okay. When you write a test or an exam and you get 90% and you get 50%, and you get 75%. People, and I saw this a lot on social media, were saying, if you're getting 50%, is that good enough to say that you only know half of the work? That's not how tests and exams work. They do not test all the content that you studied. What they tend to do, especially at tertiary level, is they tend to focus on some of the exceptional stuff. What do I mean? Because maybe it's not coming across. You study for 200 days in a year, 200 days of content. And you are going to tell me that a three hour exam is going to capture 200 days of content. The answer is obviously not. You can't test 200 days in three hours. It's like me saying your childhood was 18 years. And I'm not going to give you a three hour exam to test how well do you remember your childhood. I'm going to ask you when you're 11 years old, do you remember on the 13th of January uh, what colored jersey you were wearing? <clears throat> when you turn 17 and you kiss that girl, do you remember how long you kissed her for? When you are five years old and, and your dad hit you, do you remember what he hit you for? And if you get 30% for that three-hour exam about your childhood, that means you failed. That means you don't know your childhood. That means you're not competent with your own childhood. And that's ridiculous. That type of thinking and mindset is ridiculous. A three-hour exam, a two-hour exam, a one-hour exam, a test, it generally tests certain concepts. Yes, it may kind of highlight this person knows this and that, but it doesn't really, really speak to competency. And that's why the test and examination model is so messed up. 
We need more innovative, flexible. And you know, we had continuous assessments, uh, CATS. Continuous assessment was meant to be that. Professor Arthur Webb, who was at Rhodes University as our Dean of Commerce, uh, he taught me economics uh, at, a, at a junior and a major level, first year and third year. He was emphasizing that I don't understand why we still fixate ourselves on tests and exams. The child could have lost a parent. The child maybe in the exam, it focuses on 20% of the book. And that's the 20% they were struggling with. But 80% of the book, the child is competent and knows. But now because they failed this part, oh, the child doesn't know what they're studying. That's ridiculous. And it shows the lack of critical thinking. That people think that getting 50% for a test on an exam means automatically means you only know 50% of the content. That's silly. Some people are saying things of, would you like a doctor to get 50% for that? It doesn't work like that, guys. It doesn't work like that. And because you have been programmed in this box thinking, that's why you don't understand that getting 50% in a test is good enough to say you know the work. It is not saying you only know 50% of the work because the paper doesn't cover 100% of all the work. This is why we need continuous assessment. This is why we need practicals. Look at it this way. I made an example of growing your own food. If you were taught at school to grow your own food, seeds, seedlings, watering, fertilizing, picking out weeds, and then you go out there and you are given 10 seeds, and you plant these 10 seeds, and at the end of the season, five of these seeds germinate into something great, and five of them don't. That doesn't mean you don't know how to grow food. Oh, you got only five of your 10 seeds grew. That means you only know 50% of growing food. That is retarded thinking. And that's the type of thinking I'm trying to get you to get out of. To say, no, actually, I actually know what I'm doing. Five of my seeds didn't work out. It could have been the type of soil. Could have been there was drought. Could have been whatever the case may be. But I know how to grow food. I know how to sit down at a test and exam. I know how to write. I know how to comprehend some of these questions. If you look at my answer, some of my answer makes sense. I may not get the right answer, but I kind of have an idea of what's happening. That's also why I hate multiple choice. And multiple choice is literally guessing. You may know the work, but it's multiple choice. You don't get a chance to express yourself. Because in multiple choice, you have to pick one answer. And your, your reasoning and your rationale may make a lot of sense. But for some, you just missed like one or two and you picked the wrong multiple choice answer. But you are on the right track. That is the real world. That is why there's no blueprint to life. Kaspar Vest dropped out in high school and is very successful today as an entertainer. Beyonce knows we don't even know if she really went to school. Lil Wayne had to leave school to focus on his rap career. Did LeBron James pass matric? We don't know. Did Sia Colisi pass matric? We don't know. Gary Vaynerchuk, very successful businessman in America, didn't do well at school. So many tenderpreneurs in this country, so many business people who own supermarkets. If you look at the Pakistanis, Somalis, Ethiopians that run this puzzle shop network, if you look at some of the men that are running the taxi business, the, uh, the taxi industry, the bus industry, if you look at some of your politicians, a lot of these guys didn't do well at school. A lot of these guys may have, not got, may have dropped out of school, but they have found ways to solve problems in their real life. You don't need to get 100% in school to be a good farmer, to be a good driver, to be a good human being, to be able to converse and speak to people, to be able to make online videos. But people have contained their minds and that speaks to success in the education system that it has fundamentally destroyed your ability to be a critical thinker. And the reason I exist and the people enjoy my content is because I'm trying to rewire your frame of mind, rewire your way of thinking so that you're not just a linear thinker. You are dynamic. So moving a pass rate from 30% to 50% is not the solution. The solution is to change the content of our education and teach children real skills, number one. And number two, we need to move away from just academics. It can't just be that a child got 30% in, in a paper, therefore they are not competent. That child gets along with people in the real world. That child can play sports. That child knows how to sell cake on entrepreneurship day. That child knows how to speak to their parents, knows how to get along with their siblings. They know how to wash and iron clothing. They know how to cook. Those are real practical skills. They know how to cut hair. They know how to drive. But our education system is not about that. And that's why we've got over 70, I think 72 to 74% youth unemployment. 
that have rubbish skills. 40% graduate unemployment with rubbish skills. And we want to focus our energy from moving the pulse rate from 30 to 50. Last point. If we move the pulse rate from 30% to 50%, a lot of kids are going to have to keep repeating grades. And that's not to say they're going to do better. You want to knock their self-confidence. Understand that the schooling system is designed as a daycare center because parents are working for the industrial system, for capitalism. So it's just a daycare center. And a lot of these kids, they just get pushed out. If you know 30%, it means you are kind of in class. It means you sat for the paper. We're happy. Move on with your life. You're not trying to get into varsity, into tech. Because if you're trying, if you're trying to get into varsity, into tech, they have a minimum. So those kids know they have to push. So for those kids that want to be engineers, doctors, lawyers, accountants, actuaries, etc., they're fine. Don't worry about them. For the rest of these kids, they just need to carry on with their lives. They need to carry on. So who is going to be teaching these kids over and over and over again? We already have limited resources. We already have bad teachers. We already have schools that don't have enough equipment and infrastructure. They're saying push these kids out and let them move. My biggest issue is while you're pushing these kids, do they know how to do the basics? You've got unemployed kids in a country where other people are running spaza shops, are doing hair, are running catering businesses, are driving Ubers, are driving taxis, are doing things that do not need school. But you've got unemployment because everyone in their heads is like, I need to get 90% and an exemption. I need to get a university degree. And that speaks to the destruction of our schooling system. Again, shout out to Musi Maimani for raising these topics and for being passionate about our education system. But I think we need to completely reframe and rework our thinking around schooling and what we're actually really, really doing. Kiro, Nova Pioneer, Future Nation Schools, and a lot of these other alternative schools that are coming out, shout out to them, but they are still not hitting at the core of what needs to be resolved. We need to completely rewire, rewire the type of children we're trying to develop into functional adults. Pin you all the black pen. Cheers.